Hi, my name is Evan Cherry. I'm a senior chemical engineer at Texas A&M. To me, being an engineer is, is all about managing change and understanding that when things come in like a particular product or you want to build some sort of structure, there's generally an end point and a starting point. And the desire is to get from the starting point to the end point. And to me, being an engineer is about understanding the methods that you go through that, which is involving the problem solving, understanding the big picture, and really just getting getting right to that. Hi, my name is James Kanswick and I'm a senior chemical engineer. And to me, engineering is all about problem solving. It's developing those critical thinking skills that you're going to need in the workplace. I mean, you're going to be met with problems on a technical level every day when you get out there. So I, I feel like that's pretty much defines me as a, an engineer here. Hi, my name is Laura Young. I'm a senior chemical engineering student at Texas A&M, and to me, being an engineer is about producing results. Um, for example, when I get out into the working world, I would like to go into project management, and I, I like that because I can be the middleman. I can kind of go in and out of different areas of the project and ensure that they get done the right way in every different field. There's a variety of things. I think when people think chemical engineering, they think either chemical plants or oil plants. They're missing a, a spectrum that they didn't see before. They're missing paper processing. They're missing pharmaceuticals. They're missing semiconductors. They're missing food processing. So there's all these levels of the industry that people don't look at that chemical engineers are involved in. When I graduate in May, I'm actually going to attend the uh MD-PhD program at Texas A&M Health Science Center I'm going into a career as a physician scientist. And one thing I found is really applicable especially is transport phenomena, kinetics, control, biological control systems. I mean really a lot of the stuff that we learn in class is very relevant and I, I really feel like the curriculum has enough of the strength of the basics but also enough flexibility to kind of apply that. So I've really taken advantage of the ability to focus my electives in biochemistry and cellular biology and do some research that's more medically related, but I really get to apply a lot of my chemical engineering optimization skills and things like that. I really enjoy that. You take a big problem and chop it down to little pieces. You, uh, you draw, draw your picture, you analyze, and you label the picture, of course, and then you can see the little pieces of the labels, and then you kind of go from there with looking at equations, what you have, what you don't have, what you need to find, and putting it together. And it's, it's taking something kind of big and messy, cleaning it up and making it something you can work with. It's a lot of fun when you go and you meet people and they ask you what your major is and you say chemical engineering and they go, oh wow, man, that must be so hard. But in reality, I don't think it's so much that it's hard, it's more that it's challenging. I, I like to believe that hard is just an adjective and so what may be hard doesn't mean it's not possible, it's just it's going to be challenging. I, I actually enjoy the challenge, so I really like the curriculum, I really like the program, but on the flip side, it gives me the flexibility to do some other areas that I'm really interested in. Like I, I play in the orchestra, I'm minoring in Spanish, so right now I'm taking three chemical engineering courses, but I'm also taking two Spanish courses. I have time for research, I have time for orchestra. I have time for a little bit of a social life, usually late at night, but it's really about learning time management especially in chemical engineering because you're only as good as your unit time so you need to be as productive as you can, really focus when you need to and then as long as you do that you can get through it and you can have time for everything else you want to do. As a student, at first I think there's, a, there's an evolution involved when you for, for I think for me at least I don't know if it's the same for everybody you first show up you're fresh from high school you have this mentality you know engineering it's going to be tough uh, you're going to hit it hard and you're taking the basic courses and it is hard but you don't you know you're still developing those skills you don't really have the, the tool set yet to, to hit the more challenging courses and the, the harder balls and you, you, I didn't necessarily have the time management skills in the organization at first but you know, as it progresses, the classes got harder, and you needed to develop them. So uh, you know, you learn your lessons, what works, what what doesn't work. You know, you do the late nights for a little bit, and you try the early early morning setting for another another semester. You learn, you know, you know how long can you keep with this before you kind of fall back into your old old habits, <laughs> and then you kind of have to work with your old habits and how to make it work for you. 
being a student at Texas A&M and the chemical engineering department in particular has, is a very bonding experience Ever, because what, you know it's, it is very rigorous and we're all in the pain of it but at the same time because we go through that together it creates a team oriented atmosphere between us. We do homework together, we do projects together. Projects were a huge thing because a lot of them were open ended so we had to actually work together to come up with ideas on how we were going to present things what we were going to actually do with our projects in, in multiple um, areas. I think currently I'm, one of the biggest opportunities that I've been involved in right now is the Cutter Collaboration. And it's with the Senior Design class. Pretty much the concept of the course is we're going to be designing a, a gas processing facility. Now, in that, in that, that focus of designing the plant, they've done several things. One thing they've done is, is they divide the class up into groups, and we, we pretty much choose our own groups of people that we are going to be working with. Now, for that part, that's where the cutter collaboration groups are unique. Half the group is here. The other half of the group is in Doha, Qatar. And we have to collaborate using internet resources to get our part of the project done. Now, they've done another thing, is they've made super groups. So there's not only that level of complication in the communication that we have to deal with, there's another level. They, uh, they take the gas processing facility and they divide it up into four groups. And each group gets one of those sections. But you have to collaborate with the other groups to match the ins and the outs of your system. Because you're going to be getting the stuff going into your part from another group. And you have to agree on what that has to be before you can really move forward and you have to agree on what's going to be coming out so another group can handle that. So there's, there are several dynamics that are going to be coming into play that I feel is very real world and very much going to be part of the future for me. Plant design, it kind of encompasses all of the classes that we learn and it, and it utilizes all of them so that you know, we're designing pumps, designing columns, designing you know, everything and, and putting it all together in the big piece like what we would do in the real world. There's a lot of collaboration with Cutter, with the Cutter campus, and uh, this semester's senior design project, we're actually designing a gas processing plant for Cutter. So there's an opportunity to collaborate with some Cutter students. Dr. Baldwin's actually taking a group of us over to Cutter this weekend to go visit the campus, to see the oil fields, see kind of go to a couple of refineries, and really just go out in the field, learn what it is, and then bring that home and begin designing our own senior design project for it. You start with your inputs and you initially break it down into cycles. We're starting in super teams of about 16. We're going to divide it into four smaller teams of about four. And each person's going to have a particular part of the plant, like desulfurization, uh, distillation, things like that. And so it's all about breaking it down from this big chunk to something sizable that an individual person or a team of people can handle. And then eventually just integrate it all step by step big picture. Well, working in the real world, you're, anybody is going to have to know how to deal with different personalities, different types of people. People are looking for different things and you have to be able to relate to them and understand how to work with them and how to, how to get things done. And one of the ways that I think that being a, a chemical engineer at A&M has helped me is to learn how to work with teams. And we're going to have to do that in basically any job that you do someday. And they've definitely instilled that in all of the students. So I chose a major that I really enjoy, and it is very challenging, and I like to hope that all of this, this heavy coursework and resourcefulness and late nights will kind of prepare me for the next step.